Welcome to another episode of Amputee Outdoors. Today I'm going to show you five different ways, plus one, of stringing up your hammock. Now, I'm not going to be using the whoopee sling or anything like that. This is just five very basic ways, plus one that's my own invention and a little bit different. So hang on, stand by there. I'm going to get the camera set up to show you how this is done in detail. All right, stay with me now. Number one, the classic Hennessy lashing. This is the way Hennessy hammocks come, and uh, a lot of people mod them and things like that, but this is the classic lashing using this kind of rope. Now, this kind of rope isn't just your typical 550 power cord. This is more like um, your static mountain climbing rope. Very, very, very strong, crazy break weight. I don't know what it is. It's like a thousand pounds or something like that. But most importantly, it's static. That means that it has no stretch, or at least if it does have any stretch, it's so minimum you'll never notice it. Anyway, got my tree straps here. So I'm just gonna go and thread this through there. Pull that tight. Through the other tree strap. Pull this nice and snug. And then I'm going to basically do a figure eight lashing around the tree straps a couple of times. You can do it more if you've got more length. I don't have enough length here. Just wrap that around there, just to keep it out of the way. And that is not coming out. That's gonna hold my weight, plus my backpack weight, and whatever else I string along this line, okay? The nice thing with this is that it requires no hardware. It's very simple. Anybody can do this. You just need to string it through and lash it around a couple of times in that figure eight that I did there, all right? A um, couple of things to note though, don't do this with a strap. This works great with a piece of rope like this, a non-stretching rope. But if you try and do this with a strap, that strap is going to slide. It will. I've tried it, I've tested it, I test everything. And it slips and you end up with your butt on the ground. So don't use a strap for this kind of setup, okay? One other thing with this that you need to keep in mind is that um, you have this basically a drip carrier okay when it's raining which occasionally it does every single day um, here in the Pacific Northwest the water is going to run along here okay and it's going to get down to your hammock and it's going to drip on your hammock now, there's a knot tie right here and there's a couple more further along the line and that's what you've got to have in something like this right because you're going to have that water dripping down there you don't want that getting into your hammock all right undoing this again very simple Untie there, unlash, unlash, and you're done. Nothing to it. All right, let me uh, get the next one set up. Okay, so this one is using a special kind of knot. I think it's called the lark's head knot. It's also, I think, called the cow's head knot. Simple knot to tie, really. In fact, it's hardly more a knot create a loop like this. See that? Fold it over. So you've got a loop like that. I'll do that again. You got a loop. Fold it over. So you got a loop like that. Take your carabiner, hook it in there, pull tight. That is not going to come undone. No pun intended. Um, it's not going to come undone. It can't. It's just going to pull itself tight. This is a really useful knot I found when I've rigged up my rain fly and I know exactly where I want this carabiner, right underneath that end of the rain fly. So I'll tie that little knot there, that loop, line it up, pull it in, that's it. Now, in fact, after you've gone and slept overnight with this knot, this strap is going to be so tight, you're not even going to be able to untie it. This is too difficult. You're better off just kind of wiggling it off the carabiner like that rather than trying to untie the knot. It's that secure. And again, because you've got this dangling down like that, you've got a natural drip line for the water to come down and go down here, rather than going down the carabiner or into your hammock. This is a really secure knot. You can use it with straps or ropes. And uh, I've used it many times. Like I said, when I want to line up my rain fly and my hammock just right, I tie this one in, I'm good. The other end, I may do something different, but this one I know I've got locked in. 
All right. Let me get the next one set up for you, and I'll show you that one too. All right, so now we have what is uh, far, probably very familiar to a lot of hammockers, the uh, loop strap. Basically, it's just two straps sewn together every four to six inches or thereabouts. Far sewn or cross-stitch sewn, uh, sewn using some really, really good strong thread. And that creates these very easy loops here that you can just take your carabiner, pick your loop, and that's it. Very simple set setup. Um, one thing I will point out though, most of these come in anything from 8 to 12 foot lengths. I always suggest getting the 12 foot lengths because if you've got a tree, you've got to wrap this around, you're going to use up a lot of this just trying to get around the tree. So get the uh, longer straps so you've got more coming away from the tree to hook to. Okay. I also recommend not getting anything rated less than 300 pounds. Now you may not weigh 300 pounds, you may be well under 300 pounds. But let's say you got into your rack, into your hammock there, and you've also got your uh, uh, pack, backpack on here, and uh, one of your buddies decides, hey, it'd be really funny if I sat down there with you. Okay, that strap's gonna break. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, and the other thing that you wanna check, like with any piece of manufacturing, there's always that 0.2% variance that they allow for product defect, okay? Make sure you're not that 0.2%. When you get these delivered, check each sewn part. Look along there, visually confirm, tug on them, make sure that you didn't get that 0.2% variance and it's your butt that ends up on the ground, all right? All right, I like using these. My son uses this. It's, uh, it's his go-to method when he's out uh, camping and hammocking, okay? Um, I like them a lot. So let me go on to my next one, which I also like for a different kind of reason, all right? Hang on now. So let me show you another knot. This one is a pretty famous knot. Um, I believe it's called the Beckett Hitch Knot. Um, it's also called the Hammock Knot in a lot of places. Um, the trick with this one is that being right-handed or left-handed, you kind of develop a preference on which side of the, the um, strap you're tying it on. I'm kind of doing this backwards from where I normally do it, so if I mess it up, I do apologize. But anyway, you put it through the carabiner, pull it as tight as you like, make a loop like this, Bring the tail end through, pull it through like that, tighten on the strap, and that's it. Okay? Let me show that on the other side there. Now, again, this knot, once you learn to do it, very, very easy to do, very, very secure. Okay? Again, creates a nice drip line here for the water coming down. And to undo it, that's it. You're out. Let me show you that again. Take a loop, take the tail end through, pull your strap, and you've got it. Now you can tie this really tight. Let me give you an example. Like that. I like using this knot mainly because um, if I'm camping out and it's cold and it's wet and I get up in the morning, everything's soaking wet, everything's cold, my hands don't work as well, you know how that is sometimes. All I've got to do is pull this and I'm done and that's it, okay? So it hooks, hooks onto the carabiner here. Now I'm going to show you another version of doing this without the carabiner. Hang on. Same thing, but this time, no carabiner. I'm just going to loop it straight through here. Pull it tight, and again, pulling this nice and snug there, make a loop, come through with the tail, tie it off there, and that's not going to come out. That's holding tight. Same benefits, got a bit of a drip line, pull out this and you're done. The nice thing, of course, is I'm not having to carry around an extra carabiner. So there's a certain convenience to having carabiners, but if you're trying to cut down on weight, this is not a bad option at all. And again, it's very simple. I just have to pull off, I'm done, and I go on with packing up the rest of my gear.
All right, now I got one more to show you that does include some hardware. Hang tight now. Here's the uh, other one using hardware. Descender ring trick or belt buckle configuration. Two rings. Sharp eyed folks have already realized these aren't descender rings. A couple of rings I got at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. The rates are 300 pounds each though, so I figure they're probably strong enough, at least for me. This is a very simple technique to use. Feed the strap through both rings, open up one ring, feed it back under the other one, turn that so you can see it, and then you just tighten it down like that. Now what this is doing, if you can see there, it is pinching the strap against the strap in these two buckles here, these two rings. That is not going to come undone. Now you can, of course, tie a little Beckett hitch here if you want, just to keep it extra secure. And again, drip line, even if you don't tie it, you've got a nice drip line there for the water coming down. You can tighten this up really easily, because as you tighten it up, it holds in place. Now let's say you want to undo it. Very simple. Bend it. You pull it down like this, so it's kind of at a 90 degree angle. And it will start, yeah, it will start coming undone most of the time. I pulled it too tight. This is the one thing with this technique is that once it gets cinched in there, it can get really tight. And it becomes kind of a pain to undo. This is one of the reasons that although I've used this a great deal in the past, I don't use it as much as I used to because especially as I explained earlier in the morning sometimes because it's been cold, it's wet, it's rainy, everything's cold, everything's wet, everything's swollen up, your fingers are hardly moving. This can be a bit of a pain to set up. In the middle of summertime, it's not so big of a deal. In fact, it's kind of preferable because you just pull it through there and string it up nice and tight. All right, so I've got one more to show you that uh, is not in the standard techniques. Okay, It's not one of the knots, it's not uh, the strap sort of is the strap but not really no hardware except for what's uh, on the uh, a couple of carabiners on the hammock let me get that set up and show that to you because that one's a doozy all right so i've rigged up this ridge line here and i'm thinking that's a very nice ridge line of mule tape line with what look like knots in it what's going on here carabiner two pieces of mule tape strung together five about once every six inches creating a loop. One carabiner in there, and, uh, and the other one, hmm. Ah, I don't think I like the looks of that. No big deal. I'll just tighten this up here. You put it there. Yeah, that looks good. A little low, perhaps. Get rid of that ridge line because really. I don't need it, do I? I go a little tighter. Up to here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I like that height better. Now, the advantage with this kind of system, I can just string this hammock up wherever I want to. I can get really creative. If the trees were long enough or far enough apart, I could even probably put two hammocks off this one single line. That might be a little much, but it'd be fun to do. Let me pause this for a second and bring you in close and show you up, uh, up close and personal how I've done this, okay? Hang tight now. Okay, so you see, this is just regular old mule tape folded on itself to make two, tied off with knots, hooked in the carabiner, like that, okay? Now the nice thing with this, of course, is that wherever knot is is basically a drip point 
so I don't have to worry about the water getting down in my hammock. Every one of these knots is a drip point. Here, carabiners just hooked in there, kind of like the uh, loop strap. So I can just figure out, you know, where I want my hammock and just move it there. And then, of course, because it forms its own ridge line, I don't need to include a ridge line with my hammock anymore. Now, this system I'll give you is a little um, unique, maybe dangerous, maybe risky, who knows. Um, I haven't actually tested it myself. That is, I've not spent the night sleeping in this to see how it works. But I'm going to do that this weekend. If it fails, well, I'll let you know. All right, let me just turn this camera back around again and uh, I'll wrap this whole show up for the day, okay? If you're joining me today and checking out uh, five different ways, plus one, of stringing up your hammock. As I said earlier, I um, didn't include the whoopee sling. I don't have experience with that myself. And if you do and you'd like to tell me about them, um, put them in the comment section down there below. I'd like to hear about it. If you have ideas or suggestions not seen here or ways of improving what I've done, I'd like to hear about those as well. Just put those in the comments too. And of course, the subscribe button down there, click on that. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you've seen. And um, I hope to see you out on the trail sometime, okay? Take care now. Bye.